Recently, 171 people have died because of Lhasa fever in Nigeria despite government's measure. So in this video, we will see what is Lhasa fever in detail and what is One Health. According to World Health Organization, Lhasa fever, which is also known as Lhasa hemorrhagic fever, is an animal-borne or zoonotic acute viral hemorrhagic illness spread specifically by the natal multi-mammate mouse or common African rat. It is a member of the arena virus family of viruses. It is endemic in parts of West Africa including Sierra Leone, Liberia, Guinea and Nigeria. Neighboring countries are also at risk because the animal vector lives throughout the region. So let us see what is multi-mammate mouse or African rat. This is probably the most common mouse in equatorial Africa, common in human households and eaten as a delicacy in some areas. The multi-mammate mouse can quickly produce a large number of offspring, tends to colonize human settlements, increasing the risk of rodent human contact, and is found throughout the west, central, and eastern parts of the African continent. When it was first noticed, the first documented case of Lhasa virus occurred in 1969. Lhasa fever is named after the town in Nigeria where the first cases occurred. About 1 lakh to 3 lakh infections of Lhasa fever occur annually with about 5000 deaths. Now it is very important to know that is it harmful to humans? Humans usually become infected with Lhasa virus through exposure to food or household items contaminated with the urine and faces of infected mastomyce rats. The disease is endemic in the rodent population in parts of Western Africa. The viral infection is mainly affecting people aging 21 to 30 years with male to female ratio of confirmed case being 1 ratio 0.8. Is it endemic or pandemic? Lhasa fever is known to be endemic in Ghana, Guyana, Mali, Sierra Leone and Nigeria but probably exists in other Western African countries as well. So what is the vaccine or any medication for this? There is no vaccine. Prevention requires isolating those who are infected and decreasing contact with the mice. Other efforts to control the spread of disease include having a cat to hunt vermin and storing food in sealed containers. Treatment is directed at addressing dehydration and improving symptoms. The antiviral medication Ribavirin has been recommended but evidence to support its use is weak. What are the symptoms of Lhasa virus? About 80% of people who become infected with Lhasa virus have no symptoms. The virus affects several organs such as liver, spleen and kidney. In some cases, Lhasa fever has similar symptoms to malaria, appearing between 1 to 3 weeks after exposure to the virus. In mild cases, the disease causes fever, fatigue, weakness and headache. Serious symptoms include bleeding, difficulty in breathing, vomiting, pain in chest, back and abdomen, swelling of face and shock. Death occurs two weeks after the onset of symptoms. It mainly occurs because of multi-organ failure. The early stage of this infection can be treated using the antiviral drug ribavirin. Now, let us see what is arena viruses. Viruses in the family arena veridae are generally spread by rodents which each with each virus is associated with one or a few closely related rodent species that sphere the virus natural reservoir. The types of rodents that spread arena virus are located across much of the world including Europe, Asia, Africa and Americans. In some areas of the world, arena virus infections in people are relatively common and cause severe diseases. At least eight arena viruses are known to cause human disease. The diseases derived from arena viruses range in severity, aseptic meningitis, a severe common human disease that causes inflammation covering the brain and spinal cord can arise from the lymphocytic viruses. Hemorrhagic fever syndromes including Lhasa fever are derived from the infections such as gonadotropin Junin virus, Lhasa virus, Juno virus, Machupo virus, Sabia virus or white water arrow virus. Now the question arises why Africa is prone to most of the viral infections. Monkeypox, coronavirus, Zika and Ebola are the names that have been 
become all too familiar over the last few years. Many of these diseases were first reported in either Asia or Africa. Firstly, many viruses simply exist in nature without causing any harm to the life around them. Many that live in animals do not get detected for a long time until they come in contact with humans through animals. These are zoonotic diseases and COVID-19, monkeypox and Ebola as well as older diseases like plague and rabies are the examples. Another problem is that people and their food animals are in stationary that means they are moving all the time. The place where researchers find the first infected person is not necessarily close to the place where the virus first emerged. So, where are the most viruses found? As per the World Health Organization's disease outbreak news from January 2021 to the present day, the majority of the cases were reported in Asian or African countries. There was a 63% increase in the number of zoonotic outbreaks in Africa between 2012 and 2022. It's not that these regions are innately bound to produce new diseases. Multiple factors are at work here. The most obvious one being densely populated regions that humans in these continents have a great chance of coming in contact with animals, thus increasing the risk of the spread of the disease. Increased frequency and reach of travel, changing patterns of land use, changing diets, wars and social upheavals and climate change. These factors increase interactions between humans and reservoir hosts, facilitating exposure to zoonotic viruses and spillover infections in people. Coming to Africa in particular, infections originating in animals and then jumping to humans have been happening for centuries, but the risk of mass infections and deaths have been relatively limited in Africa. This is because of the poor transportation infrastructure that acted as a natural barrier. The rapid growth in urbanization and infrastructure development as well as the clearing of biodiversity rich areas has led to the more interactions among species in the last few decades. Poor health system and social upheavals may also be to blame due to which healthy generally, health generally becomes neglected. So what is the way forward? Given the reasons for the spread of disease, it might feel that this trend will only grow over time something experts have questioned about, but the One Health approach is also being offered as a solution by experts across the board. The concept basically says that human health, environment health and animal health are all linked together as the pandemic has shown us. The idea states that by avoiding over-exploiting any one of these domains and timely surveillance of the health of these domains, collective health can be protected and the spread of disease can be made less disruptive. That's all in today's session. See you soon.